Hey everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron and we made it back from the truck gathering. A little bit lighter than we were when we went, but we made it back. So that's all that matters. Time to move on and uh, walking around looking at my shop and remembered that I worked right up until the last minute when I left to get that truck done and the shop shows it. I've got crap everywhere. Every bench is full, every, everything. Floors dirty, there's just crap everywhere. So I took the day off yesterday to relax and catch up and uh, I'm over here today ready to get at it again. This week, cherry pie will be finished. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's crunch time for cherry pie. We're gonna get her done and get her back to her owner. I've got a couple more projects sitting out there waiting to get going and we're gonna jump on those and get them going as well. So, uh, yeah. So, now that Rum Runner's gone, and I want to keep moving on with what I'm doing. All RJ's the new workhorse, show truck, heavy hauler, whatever I need it to do, that's what it's gonna be for. So we'll be uh, tinkering with RJ quite a bit here and there to get it fine tuned and you know, little stuff. I don't wanna body work it and paint it. It's a survivor truck other than the motor i like it the way it is so well i might do a little bit of like hammer and dolly body work on it but i'm gonna leave it i'm not gonna put filler in it and sand it and paint it i'm gonna get it as smooth as i can hammering and dolly in it and a couple spots that are dented pretty good and then we're gonna just leave it like that let it rust a little bit whatever it wants to do and keep the look that it has so I don't know what else we're going to do to it. I guess that'll come as it goes. I've got a feeler out to a gentleman that's putting on a show in Alabama next month. It happens to be on my birthday weekend. And I would like to go to that show. It's one of my bucket list shows that I've wanted to go to for a while. So I don't know. I've heard that the vendor spots are sold out there. So if they are, I might just get things sorted for next year. If they're not, I might try to sneak in. So we'll find out. As soon as I find out, I'll let y'all know. But uh, I'm gonna get cleaning up. I'm gonna get this shop all cleaned up. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do next and I'll film it for you guys. All right. Pretty much got the shop cleaned up. It's taken me most of the day, but this is the furthest that I've gone with cleaning it since I moved in this one. And I really want to keep it this way. So it hasn't gotten terribly bad until just the crunch to make it to the show with Rum Runner. But it was kind of slowly working its way to being bad. So anyways, we got her all pretty well cleaned up. The bench is still a mess a little bit, but it's got parts for a truck I got to work on this week on it. And... That table over there is kind of still a mess, but that's the air cleaner and stuff that goes over here in Cherry Pie. Got some uh, banners that were given to me at the show. Over the weekend, hung up. Found places for, I don't know if anybody remembers or if you're new to the channel, you might not have seen, but right here there was a huge pile of uh, extension cords and airlines that I didn't really know where to put. Figured that out. So... We got that done, and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is clean up on the patio a little bit. I'm gonna bring in the next Harmon Garage personal project that we're gonna work on in between other stuff or while we're waiting for parts or whatever the case may be, and uh, get some stuff straightened out. I'll show you guys what that's gonna be, and then we're gonna knock out cherry pie. Well, spent all that time cleaning up shop yesterday. And then I went to bring the next project in 
Uh, it leaks power steering fluid because the lines aren't hooked up. So, I made a big mess again. But, I've had a lot of people ask me in person and in messages and on comments and everything else, when's the burnout truck coming back? Well, got space in the shop now that Rim Runner's gone. There it is. Still working on cherry pie this week, finishing it up. I've got another truck I gotta do for a buddy outside that'll be outside, but the burnout truck is inside. That means that it's my project that's being worked on at this time. So there it is, burnout truck's in. I'm gonna clean up my power steering mess. I put oil dry on it, let it sit overnight, and clean it up. Then I'm gonna figure out what we gotta finish off on cherry pie here and try to get her home. All right, well, I can say that I'm officially working on cherry pie, like I said I was going to, but there's been a lot of squirrels running around here today. Like crazy, I can't even explain it all. Uh, so I went home, and I got my lawnmower and I mowed down all that tall grass over there and over along the ditch and up here and all that to help keep the snakes away, which didn't really need to be done today and I don't even know why it happened, but my buddy stopped by and I'm like, hey, you wanna give me a ride home to get my mower? And he's like, sure. So. Rode over there, got my mower, rode it back over here, pulled in, started mowing. So I guess I needed to get some mowing done today. So, but I tested all the wiring to the relay, out of the relay, everything else, and back to the tank. And I seem to have power everywhere that I should and the fuel pump wasn't running. So uh, when I went, I just cut these because when I go back with them, I always make them plenty long so you can actually get the tank down to the ground with them connected. So I went ahead and cut those. And when I cut those, the main feed line had smoke coming out of it. And I didn't have the key on and didn't have anything hooked up don't know what was going on, but either way, that was smoking until I cut the wiring going to the fuel pump. So I need to see, maybe that relay stuck, sending power all the time, but regardless, even if that's the case, if the relay is sending power, the pump should be running, I should be getting fuel to the motor, and I'm not. So I'm gonna get, first thing I'm gonna do is get the vacuum over here, get this all uh, vacuumed off and cleaned up, and then we'll go ahead and yank the pump out of there, see what it looks like. Holy crap. 
Yeah. I think we're just gonna dump this out some more. Of course, you know, in a environmentally approved location for proper waste re removal. Let me change the battery on my uh, flashlight here. I'll bring you guys over, show you what it looks like inside, and then uh, I'm gonna go find a container to dispose of this. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's gonna be fine, you know. There's no way in hell fuel is getting pulled through that sock. This sending unit is rusting and flaking off. We need to clean that good. And then inside there, let's see how good I can. It's kind of hard to show you guys, get a light to where you can see, but. Needless to say, uh, it is not good, and uh, so we'll get it cleaned out. I'm 99% sure that pump's junk after seeing what it's sitting in. Supposedly this truck only sat for like three years, and it was running before that. There's a plastic liner with, you know, slosh guards or like my brain's totally not functioning right now <sighs> they've got like dividers in the tank so that the uh, fuel can't slosh around and it stays by the pump and they're plastic so the bottom of the tank is plastic and I know that the bottom of the tank is metal also but that's a lot of rust for three years so I'm going to do what I got to do, get this cleaned out, get this cleaned up, and then we'll uh, throw the other pump on and see what happens. Well, this video is already all over the place and I'm about to add to the fun. So I talked to the owner of Cherry Pie and he agreed with me that the best plan for going forward with this is to order a new tank for the truck. So this tank junk he ordered a new tank today it's supposed to be here to me by the 24th so when it comes in we can throw it together and cherry pie will finally be done so that being said since we can't continue working on cherry pie and that's what we were doing in this video we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one of the next projects which is this thing I have not given this truck a name yet and to be honest with you I really don't even know where to start with a name but we're not gonna get into all that the only thing it's here for is it came over because it was running hot and he couldn't figure out why so I pulled it up here started looking at it and found out that somebody put a pre-throttle body motor. As you can tell, it has perimeter bolt valve covers. So they put a pre-throttle body perimeter bolt valve cover motor in here. Uh, and then put the throttle body intake and heads on it. Which, if you don't know this already, the front two bolts and the back two bolts on each side of the intake will line up. The center bolts do not. You have to hog them out and they always leak. Well, they didn't do that and I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you guys, but you see me spinning that washer and rocking it up and down. These bolts that got in there aren't even anywhere near tight same thing on the other side they don't go in I fired the truck up I sprayed brake parts cleaner down in there and it gets in there and starts whistling Dixie so once again I gave them an option either need to get a throttle body motor and we'll put the throttle body intake and all the computer and crap and everything back on it or we 
take the throttle body intake out, punt it down the road, switch over to a carburetor intake with an HEI distributor, and clean everything up and get them running good, not overheating, and everything will be fine. So he decided to go that route. So that's what we're gonna do on this one. I've had a lot of people ask me about, wow, he's cool. Anyways, I had a lot of people, I've had a lot of people ask me about, especially with the fact that I was putting a carburetor motor and rim runner, uh, how you do the wiring and stuff when you switch from a throttle body over to a carburetor. So this is the perfect opportunity to show you guys. So it's the end of the day today. I'm uh, getting ready to clean up and go home. I come back, I gotta charge my cameras, they're almost dead. I'll come back first thing in the morning. We'll get started on that thing, whatever it is. We'll get started on it, try to get it knocked out, and then we'll uh, move on to some fun stuff. All right. Time to get started on teardown on this thing. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and start pulling off everything we don't need. Gonna make pretty quick work of it. And uh, I'll just go over the important factors with you guys. What I'm doing right now is taking the cover off the electronics. And most of this stuff we're not going to need. But what I want to do is unplug this fuse. And unplug the fuel pump really. Because we're definitely not going to need either one of those. So we'll get that unhooked for right now. And then I want to get this air intake out of my way. I already drained the coolant out of this thing. So we don't have to worry about that. So we'll get I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do, and then I'll go ahead and do it. And then when I get to the critical stuff, like I told you, I'll bring you back and show you what we're doing. But for right now, I'm going to take our upper radiator hose off. I'm going to disconnect all our wiring and get it out of the way. Take all our spark plug wires off. Uh, disconnect the... Um, Vacuum line for the brake booster. And then, uh, once I get all that done, I'll bring you guys back and we'll go over what I'm going to do with the distributor so that it makes it easier to stab the new one when we go back in with it. But I'm going to go ahead and get everything stripped down and when I go to go after the distributor, I'll bring you guys in here and show you what I got going on. All right, hopefully the lighting's good enough and hopefully the wind's not too bad in the camera. But I'm gonna show you guys multiple ways to do this. So what I was originally gonna do, what I was gonna show you guys how to do, is I was gonna verify where number one was, the number one spark plug wire was on the cap. And then, when I took the cap off, I could look, see where my rotor was pointing, and I can drop my distributor right back in in the same spot, put number one back in the same spot on the cap, and we would have been good to go. Well, not so much, because I didn't verify where number one was on the cap before I took it off, and this distributor was loose, and I'm not even going to get into the way this is. This guy took this truck to somebody to get it, get a motor put in it, and they got him good. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know who it was. Not in the market to badmouth anybody, so I'm going to pretty much stop right there. But, uh, yeah, 
be careful who you take your stuff to watch get some recommendations or something don't just go take it to anybody because I mean right now I'm pulling a drywall screw out of the distributor cap so and that other one that other screw is kind of sort of broke off let me see if I can get something to get it out generally you don't have to go through all this because generally there's the right stuff in there and you can just take stuff apart and do it I do not know what the hell is going on here I can't even get that cap off anyways what I'm trying to explain is if you verify where number one is you pull the distributor cap off and see where your rotors pointing wherever it may be you can make a mark up here on the firewall you can make a mark over here wherever it's pointing and then once you change the intake out and go to put your new your HEI distributor back in you can just line it it should line up you should be able to drop it right in the same spot because it'll drop down in the oil pump priming rod in the same spot and everything so that's the easiest way to do it if you're not real comfortable with stabbing distributors and doing timing and all that kind of stuff that'll get you really close and then you put your number one back on wherever it was on this cap you put it in the same spot on the other cap and then you go one eight four three six five seven two you're really close and you got your firing order in there so uh, since I can't get that cap off and I didn't verify where number one was and I already explained to you guys that method I'm just gonna go ahead and yank that uh, distributor out get the valve covers off get the intake off and then we'll move on alright I got everything out of here I got it all scraped clean with a scraper I had towels down in there to keep it from getting in the valley took those out vacuumed everything out now I'm just wiping it down with a little bit of brake parts cleaner on a rag get it clean then I'm gonna take silicone pardon the wind guys take silicone I prefer the ultra copper or the ultra gray I'm sorry I don't even know what I'm talking about I ate lunch and now I want to go to bed so I'm just gonna take and run a thick quarter inch bead along the back wall here And then I'm going to put some around the water jackets on both ends of the head. Just a real thin coat, basically just to hold the gaskets in place. And give it a little bit extra sealing. But mainly to hold the gaskets. Do that on the back. Do the same thing up here on the front.
Alright. Got all that silicone on there. I'm going to let it set up for a minute. While I'm letting it set up, I'm going to go grab the gaskets. And then I'll set the gaskets on there and kind of put them on the silicone that I put around the water jackets and get them in place where I need them to be. And uh, then we'll let that sit up for a second and we'll grab our intake. Okay, we got our intake gaskets on there. I got this intake all cleaned up and painted so it looks better. And this sucker's heavy, so it's a factory cast iron intake. I'm going to see if I can get it down in there without pushing the gaskets around or messing up my silicone down there. Let's see what happens. Yep. It didn't seem to go too bad. I got new bolts for it. 3.8.16 inch and a quarter, inch and a half long, somewhere in there. Worked perfect. The reason I got new bolts is because it didn't have the right ones in it. It had fender bolts and whatever else you could think of. So Now what I'm going to do is I just want to get all the bolts started and then I'm gonna walk away the reason I do that is because I let the silicone on the ends set up not like completely 100% but I just let it set up a little bit so that then when I squeeze the uh, intake down it seals better at least in my opinion all right well I already told you what I'm doing I'm not gonna make you guys watch me sit here and fight all the bolts so we're just gonna get all the bolts started and then we'll uh, let it sit for a little bit all right time to give you guys a little update I've gotten quite a bit done since the last I showed last I showed we were working on putting the intake on that's done. I got our adapter plate. I got our carburetor on. Got the new valve covers put on. And uh, got new spark plugs put in it because it had the wrong spark plugs put in it. Um, quite a bit of stuff. I got my starter button hooked up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the motor over. I left the number one plug out. I'll stick my finger in there, I'll bump the motor over, when it blows my finger out I'll know that I um, should be on top dead center number one on the compression stroke and then I've got an HEI distributor that I'll stab in there and uh, I'll get that done real quick, I'll get my distributor stabbed in there, get it roughly where it needs to be and snug down and then I'm going to show you what you got to do for the wiring to switch over from TBI to carburetor with an HEI okay so the wiring part of this switching over from throttle body to carburetor is a lot easier than people think it is they think it's a big deal and it's going to cause a lot of issues and everything else but it, it's really not it's simple so right here you have your plug-in your pigtail that goes to your coil when it's TBI, remember the coil sits right here in front of the other style distributor. This comes over, plugs into that, power comes off of that, goes to your distributor module, yada, yada, yada. Well, right now I've got the key in the off position. Got my power probe right here. I'm going to test this. And I've got a ground. It's got nothing. So I'm going to go in here, turn my key on, now I'm going to come back here, I'm 
I don't know if you guys can see that. It says 11.8 volts. This battery's junk. I just tried to charge it and it smells like rotten eggs, so it's no good. But anyways, pink wire goes into the coil. It's gonna be your coil wire. Cut that off, put a female spade connector, plug it up into your distributor cap, you have your ignition power. Bada bing, bada boom, done. Like that's the only power with key on, no power with key off. That will start and shut off your vehicle, let it run, whatever. So that's really the only main wire that you need. Now, a couple other things you wanna do. I pull the fuse out of the ECM. There's an ECM fuse or two ECM fuses. I pull those out because then it's not trying to power everything in the motor. That can make your gauges mess up, but not any worse than the crap gauges in from the factory and these things were to begin with. So the other thing I do, I come out here, right here, that's your fuel pump relay. Notice it's unplugged. I got it unplugged. We're not running any fuel pumps. You can run the electric fuel pump that came with the truck and you can put a regulate fuel pressure regulator in line regulate it down to the five to seven psi that you need for the carburetor and do that but if you're because this is a perimeter valve perimeter bolt valve cover motor pre-87 i have the provisions for a mechanical fuel pump in the side of the block so i'm going to use it i'd much rather have the mechanical than the electric a lot more uh I want to apologize guys, I'm not feeling the best. I didn't realize it before, but I apparently hurt my back really bad in that accident and didn't know it until about two, three days ago. Anyways, dependable. That's the word that I was trying to think of. The mechanical pumps are a lot more dependable than the electric pumps. So if I have the option to run a mechanical pump, that's what I'm gonna do. I have the option on this one, so that's what I'm gonna do. So. We got the fuel pump relay unplugged. All the other wiring is set off to the side. We want to make sure, I haven't done this yet, but we want to make sure that our charge wire and our wiring for our alternator are plugged in. I'm going to have to bring that back over here and hook that up. No big deal. Easy as pie. Plug that in there stick that on there and then the rest of the wiring i'm going to separate and i'll take it over to the side and i'll tape it up and loom it up and basically hide it so you can't see it but if anybody ever wanted to put a throttle body motor back in this truck everything will be there to do it so i'm going to get that wire hooked up to the coil and hook up the other couple wires that we need get rid of the other wires that we don't need plug a whole bunch of vacuum lines and then we can try to start this thing so i'm gonna do what i just said i was gonna do and i'll bring you guys back and show you what we're doing all right got the distributor dropped in got the wires hooked up the spark plug wires hooked up got all the wiring hooked back to the alternator all that stuff i got still got to hook that up but there's no water in it anyway so it ain't hurting nothing still got to clean up wiring still got to adjust timing all that stuff i already hit it to see if it was going to start and it did but i still need to adjust timing and all that stuff i still need to hook up vacuum lines i just got everything plugged right now but in the meantime I'm gonna fill up the float bowls with gas here through the vent.
spray a little bit down the yep. See what happens. running a lot better than that before it just doesn't have enough gas in it pretty sure I just scorched half my beard and probably my eyelashes at least I caught it on camera I'm gonna try again I had it running better than that but who knows But it does run, everything's working. I just like I said, I gotta finish up the other stuff. There we go. That's how it was running before. When it's got fuel, it does okay. So, I'm going to unplug this battery. I've had it on the charger, so I can at least turn the motor over, but I know the battery's bad because it smells like rotten eggs really bad. And I don't want to be standing next to it when it blows up, so I'm going to get it off the battery charger. And uh, now we know that it runs and everything is close to where it should be, I can go ahead and hook up fuel and clean up wiring and all that kind of stuff so I'm gonna tell you I gotta get a couple more parts I need a bracket a throttle bracket because that stock one not the right configuration it's not gonna work and I have to get a fuel line to hook in here and I think that's it but uh, so I'm gonna take a break and I'll be back with you guys in just a second well my beard my eyebrow are still here I guess it's a good thing would have made for video good for video if it was not but I'm glad it is anyways got this thing going I know it'll run I just got to hook fuel up to it so I can get it to run long enough that I can do some tuning on it because it's definitely not all timed right and where it needs to be right now but it does run and I did show you guys what you had to do to switch over from throttle body to carburetor which was the main purpose this guy having problems because of what they did to his truck like I said I'm not going into that a whole lot but regardless they took a essentially a carbureted well they took a perimeter bolt valve cover motor carburetor motor and put a throttle body intake and throttle body on it without any modification which you can't do the bolts don't line up you get bad vacuum leaks and all that jazz so uh so we got it back so we got this motor to where it has the right intake on it and it'll seal now it's got a carburetor and I showed you guys what you had to do for the wiring. It's all working the way it should. Now there is, there's multiple ways you can do this. Like I said, you can put, you can leave the electric pump. You can run a fuel pressure regulator where you can regulate it down to four to six, five to seven, four to nine, whatever PSI you need to run your carburetor and do it that way. I, prefer to run mechanical pumps like I said earlier this motor still has a mechanical pump on it right down here I don't know how well you can see it but it still has a mechanical pump on it from when it was a carburetor motor before it got put in this truck 
I'm gonna try to use that pump and see if it works. If it doesn't, I have other ones. I'll put one on there. But so what I'm gonna do is drop the fuel tank and get rid of uh, get rid of the electric pump. Make some modifications to the sending unit, and then just run a line. All right, I'll start at the beginning. So this. This is the sending unit out of Cherry Pie. I got it out because the fuel pump was bad. I got a fuel pump for it over there, but we had to get a new tank. I don't have the new tank yet, so I'm not in a big rush. Anyways, so this right here is where your little rubber collar goes that your fuel pump hooks up to, and then it sits down in this thing. Now this is the same on this OBS here. So what I do, same thing I did on Rum Runner, if you've been around for a while, you probably saw it in that video. But this is nylon fuel line repair kits, and it has 3 8 I take the 3 8 one, get it open real quick. I take the 3 8 one, and what you do is you take a heat gun. You don't want to use like a lighter or a torch or anything because you want to, you don't want flame on it, but you want even heat. You take a heat gun and you heat this up. And then you take it and you evenly push it up on there all the way up to where that pump would have gone. And then you come down here and you cut it off right at the bottom of the tank. And that creates a new pickup all right sorry about that buddy showed up so as i was saying three eighths line heat it up press it over where your rubber coupler would go for your electric pump and then i come down here right at the bottom here and i cut this at like a 45 degree angle Pretty much with the tip of the plastic touching the bottom of the tank because then you get about as far about as far down in the tank as you can get and pull fuel all the way from the bottom so that's uh that's how i do that with the fuel tank if you want to see what i'm talking about i'll try to put a tab up here in the top i that's the same thing i did on the fuel tank for rum runner and i actually filmed all that and then after I get the tank put back in, which probably gonna be a couple days before I even attempt the tank right now. But I go to the filter, front of the filter, get a metal line that'll screw into the filter or just cut off the line that's already there in front of the filter, run a, run a rubber line up to the mechanical pump and uh, then plumb the pump to the carburetor and that's it. So that's where with the exception of running the fuel system, we're pretty much done with that project and doing the timing and adjusting the carburetor and all that stuff. But you guys have seen me do all that. I have it in other videos. So I just got to run the fuel system. I can't do it right now with my back hurting the way it is. So uh, yeah, but here's a little update. Got my water tank all painted black and we've got right here i don't know you guys can see that's the gallons that's 125 and we're above that and i've already used some water but we're above the 125 and on the front side uh hold on let me get this back on the front side the measurement's different and at the end of the day according to my phone Friday we got 0.35 inches of rain I came over here and checked on that and I had 137 gallons of water so like one inch of rain would fill that or three quarters of an inch of rain would fill that whole tub for me which is awesome um, the fuel tank for cherry pie was supposed to be here Monday today's Wednesday we haven't got it yet part of living in a small town in the middle of nowhere 
stuff doesn't show up when they say it's going to and you wait and you eventually get it so hopefully that shows up it's another thing that's going to be really painful to do right now but got to push through and get it done and uh yeah so this video is getting long enough i'm gonna go ahead and end it here there's a lot of stuff going on in this video but uh next video will either be finishing up cherry pie or starting something else but uh we can pretty much call this gray obs done like i said i just gotta make the change in the fuel tank hook the fuel line up and uh it's ready to go so yeah that's about it thank you guys for watching sorry this video is kind of off like i said apparently i hurt my back and i'm in a terrible amount of pain thanks for watching if it wasn't for you guys i wouldn't be able to do this y'all have a good one we'll see you next time <laughs>